Hello and welcome to this next exercise on multiple linear regression. Now we have uh, a model that might look familiar, but now I've added a couple of dummy variables to it. So here I've copied this from problem 15.1b, where we had developed an estimated regression equation that had in it quite a high level of multicollinearity. We had as independent variables age and uh, years of experience. Those were found to be very highly correlated uh, uh, among each other. So here I've removed, uh, in this model, I've removed experience, I've kept age in the model, but now I've incorporated two dummy variables to take into account or to determine whether or not uh, educational attainment has a statistically significant impact on average salary. So I have two dummy variables here, masters and PhD, because I have three levels or th within this category. So I would have, let's say, somebody with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a PhD. And I have x2 and x3 are the two dummy variables that we have to find. Now, when students look at this model, at this equation, sorry, they'll say, well, Peter, why do you only have master's and PhD? I don't see bachelor's degree in there. Well, bachelor's degree is implicit in this model. Bachelor's degree is what we call our base case. It's the one against which these two uh, other values are compared against. So as the base case, what this means is that our dummies both take on this value of zero. Master's degree, if you have a master's degree, x2 has a value of one and x3 is zero. If you have the PhD, x2 has a value of zero and x3 has a value of one. So what does all this mean? Well, in a way we have now actually three uh, regression equations. If we look at somebody with a BA, well I have the expected value of somebody with a BA is going to be beta zero plus beta one age because both of those dummies will have a value of zero, so they're gone, they're, they don't even matter. If I'm looking at somebody with a master's, well now the expected value of y, so salary, is b0 plus b1 age plus beta two. And I don't have to put in one, it's just one, so I can omit it, but now we can see how that influences the, the regression equation. When we were doing other regressions and we had these coefficients on those independent variables, well, these were continuous variables. So those coefficients, in this case, beta one, gave us the slope uh, or a partial slope uh, of, that, of the estimated regression line. But now, with a dummy variable, it's not continuous variable, it's binary. It's only a zero or a one. So it's either a zero, as it is here, it's not there because it's a zero, or if it's a one, as it is here, well, it shows up just as the value of the coefficient. So what this means is that that coefficient, beta two, it now acts on the intercept rather than having any impact on a slope. So what that does is it gives us a second intercept uh, for that regression equation for that level of the categorical variable. Similarly, if we look at somebody here with a doctorate, so this is now the expected value of salary, beta zero, beta one age, plus, so now x3 is zero, so I don't have to include it. Uh, yeah, x3 is zero, did I do this right? Yeah, and sorry, x2 is zero, so I don't have to include x2 because we're looking at a, somebody with a PhD but now we have beta three because now x three takes on the value of one. And so again, beta three, that acts uh, on the y-intercept. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on and then uh, we'll I'll draw a picture a little bit later once we go through the exercise. So the regression output looks uh, the same as any other regression output. There's, it's not computed any differently. We use Excel in the exact same manner as as we have before. Now, for part A, write the estimated regression equation. So here again, we're just taking this information, same as we did before, y hat, so that predicted salary, the average salary, our y-intercept is 30.57 plus 478 age 
plus 11.8 masters plus 31.12 uh, PhD. Okay, so there's our estimated regression equation. Interpret the R squared. Well, that's no different than before. R squared is SSR over SST still. So it's SSR over SST. And this is a percentage. So here our regression uh, captures 88% of the variation in our dependent variable. So age and educational attainment explains 88% of the variation in average salary. Our adjusted R squared, it's pretty close. It's a little bit of a drop but it's pretty close, so we don't have anything in that model that is excessively useless. Um, I don't want to say any more than that because I already know what the results of our hypothesis tests are going to be, but that adjusted R squared is pretty close. We do still see a drop. There'll always be some drop, but it's still quite high, so that's indicative that our model is generally uh, still quite good. Interpret the coefficients and corresponding confidence intervals. Okay. So what we have here, <clears throat> let me draw some pictures here now. So if we have, here's, here's our salary, this is our Y. Now, I have three independent variables, but I still only have one x-axis, uh, this age variable, <clears throat> because these other two dummy variables, as I mentioned before, they're not considered as slopes. They act on the y-intercept. So I don't need another dimension in my diagram uh, to show these dummy variables. Because what we have, if I look at, when we come back here, this scenario here, somebody with a bachelor's degree, all we have is the y-intercept and the slope on age. Beta 2 and beta 3 aren't part of that model. So what we have then is one line like this with our, our y-intercept B0. This has the slope 478. And this is our y-hat for, I don't want to write the whole thing out again, but this is x3 uh, x2 and x3 are both equal to zero. So this is that, as I called it before, the base case. This is that relationship between salary and age for somebody with a bachelor's degree. <clears throat> now, if we incorporate somebody with a master's degree, it would be something like this. It's a positive relationship, so it's a little bit higher. And so this still has that same slope, 478. And this has a y-intercept now, b0 plus, uh, not plus this one, plus this one, 11.8. So plus b2. So this is x2 is equal to 1, and x3 is equal to 0. So how do we interpret that coefficient? Well, it's not the same way as we did with the slope. When we're looking at the slope, we would say <clears throat> for each uh, additional year in age, so for every additional year older the person is, that contributes an average of 4.78. Here we're measured in thousands of dollars. So each additional year older contributes $4,780 to average salary. Each additional year. When we look at our dummy variables, there isn't each additional degree or each additional level of educational attainment. No, it's simply if you have a master's or you have a bachelor's or we can also add in here our PhD, also a positive relationship, so it's a little bit higher. And this is the one with x2 is 0 and x3 is 1. So these coefficients now on those dummies tell us the difference between each of those levels and the base case. So B2, B if I pick here's whatever, age 30, so this vertical difference here, which is B2, that would tell me what's the difference in average salary between somebody uh, with a bachelor's and with a master's. So this, B, this distance, B2, 
11.08. That says that getting a master's degree contributes an average of $11,000 uh, or $11,080 to average salary. Getting a PhD, so now that coefficient is 31.12, that's our B3, that's this whole vertical distance here. So compared to that base case, which is our bachelor's degree, a PhD contributes $31,120 to average annual salary. So the interpretation's a little bit different because it's not a continuous variable. It's not each additional unit of whatever. You either have it or you don't. So if you have a master's degree, on average, $11,000 more than a bachelor's. If you have a PhD, on average, $31,000 more than a bachelor's. So they're all relative to that base case scenario. Now, the confidence intervals, a similar interpretation uh, for age. So each additional year of age, my point estimate is $4,780. 95% confident that each additional year older that you are contributes uh, between $3,520 and $6,030 to average salary. Uh, having a master's degree, my point estimate compared to a bachelor's degree contributes $11,080 to your average salary. 95% confident that, oh, we have a negative here. 11 is our point estimate, positive 23, negative 1. So this is going to be consistent with the hypothesis test that we'll get to quite shortly. Master's degree apparently is not statistically significant in terms of its contribution to your average annual salary. That's not very motivating, but in this fabricated data set, uh, that's our case. So our 95% confidence interval would be that I'm 95% confident that having a master's degree will either decrease your income by $1,000 or increase it by as much as $23,000. I'm not able to say that it's statistically different from zero. A PhD or a doctorate, on the other hand, my point estimate, it'll contribute $31,120 more relative to a bachelor's degree. Um, and I'm 95% confident that its contribution to average salary will be between $18,880 and $43,370. Now, what if we want to know what's the difference between a bachelor's, uh, sorry, a PhD and a master's degree? Well, for that, we want to know what's the difference between that intercept for a PhD minus the intercept for a bachelor's. And of course, that just gives us B3 minus B2. So if we subtract 11, uh, oops, if we subtract 31.12 minus 11.08, well, now I have a point estimate here of, oops, 31.12 minus 11.8. I have a, oh, I don't think that was right at all. 31.12 minus 11.08. So $20,040. So my estimate for the difference in average annual salary between having a, uh, a PhD and a master's degree, so that's this vertical difference, is $20,040. Okay, so it's a little bit different than, than a slope because now these are just average differences between these different levels of a category. So if we wanted to do uh, well, actually, why don't we? It's not part of the question, but here I have a scenario. Let's talk about somebody's average annual salary. If you're 30 years old, if you're 30 years old, what's your expected average salary if you have a bachelor's degree, if you have a master's degree, if you have a PhD? So if you have just the, the bachelor's degree, this is going to be 30.57 plus 4.78 times 30. If you have the master's degree, this is going to be 30.57 plus 478 times 30 plus 
Now you have that master's degree, so it's plus 1108. And if you have the doctorate, 3057 plus 478 times 30 plus, now this one is turned on, so this is 31.12. So now let's, I'm running out of space in here, so let's look at this person with a bachelor's degree. 3057 plus 4.78 times 30. So, oh, that's, that's a good income. 173,097.7. For your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, well, all we have to do is add 11.08 to that, plus 11.08. 185.05 so this one is 185.05 now to get the PhD again that's that difference that 31.12 that's relative to a bachelor's degree so I have to subtract out uh, let's get back to our 173.97 so that was my average salary for somebody with a bachelor's degree then we add in that PhD 31.12 so $205,090, $205,009. Good, so there's, uh, it's not part of the question, it probably should be, but <laughs> we've got point estimates now for a 30 year old with a bachelor's, a master's and a PhD. Let's go back up to what we're supposed to be doing here. Part D, interpret the p-values. So here we found age is statistically significant. Master's degree, we already confirmed looking at our confidence intervals, not statistically significant, but getting a doctorate is statistically significant, all relative to a bachelor's degree. So a master's degree is not statistically significant difference in income relative to a bachelor's, um, but a doctorate is. Good, and overall model, p-value on the overall model is zero. So definitely statistically significant uh, for the model. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that makes some sense. We'll do a couple of more exercises with dummy variables. Uh, and they're a little bit, little bit different, but hopefully not too, too much more complicated. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.